grateful for the blessings you gave us. Please make this day successful and happy. This is my prayer in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning! It is a pleasure to welcome everyone to the Newfield STEM School of the Vow 6 STEM Week with the theme, The STEM Success Story Begins With You. Celebrate STEM. Celebrate, Celebrate you. It is indeed an exciting day because somehow you will still be able to celebrate STEM Week virtually despite the pandemic happening in our world today. And now, let us listen to our respectable school founder, Dr. Napoleon K. Juanillo, Jr. Good morning. Good morning, new fielders. Um, I am speaking from Naga, where I am from. Naga, as you very well know, is a city in Camarines Sur, in the island of Luzon. And so, um, I, I am a little bit uh, challenged by my internet connections. I live in a house where there are also two, uh, uh, I should say, pupils. Uh, one in in uh, grade four and another one in 11th grade or 10th grade. And so I think, uh, and so, you know, we do have some connectivity problems, but in any case, Thank you very much for inviting me to speak. You know, I kind of reflected on your theme. It says there, <clears throat> celebrate STEM and celebrate you. You know, it's a very, very simple, uh, I must say, uh, motto for the STEM week. Why did we say celebrate you? Because really, when you study science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, it's all about things that are around you. Things that you see, things that you smell, things that you hear, things that you taste, things that you can touch and feel. And so all of this <clears throat> are sources every day of new things to learn from. You don't necessarily have to have, you know, an internet. You don't necessarily have to keep on Googling, Googling things. You don't necessarily have to look for things in the YouTube or in the books. <clears throat> well, those things are important. There is no question. And those things provide us with exciting new information. However, the best source of learning and information is really you. Let's take, for example, you have a baby brother, you know? If you have a baby brother, look at him or look at her. See how he tries or how she tries to take a look at the world, you know? She's always giggling or she's always trying to kind of, you know, uh, shake his or her feet, etc. She too is almost like a STEM student. You know, a baby is like a STEM student. She's always trying to feel her way around the world, you know. So remember when you see a baby or when you were once a baby, everything that you get hold of, you put into your mouth. You remember that? Whenever ever you see a baby, you know, everything that they see, you know, they grab it and put it in their mouth. They're trying to, you know, taste it. They're trying to feel it, you know. And then when they don't like it, they throw it. <laughs> well, we don't throw things anymore. But all I'm trying to say is that you can see the, the sense of wonder and curiosity in every baby. They open every door. They open every cabinet. They try to feel everything, even if they fall, even if they get hurt, even if <clears throat> they tumble, they do everything. That is also what a STEM student is like. And that is you. You get to tumble, you get hurt, you feel pain. Because if you don't feel pain, you know, if you don't know how to feel it, then I don't think you're in STEM, you know. Uh, you have to, you, when, when, you, when you try to, let's say, <clears throat> uh, go uh, try to feel the stems of, of a plant, for instance, sometimes it's furry, sometimes it's smooth, but sometimes it's prickly, right? So, but those things are always a source of 
lessons and everyone's lesson is different from the other you know so sometimes i think you get to ask your classmate what did you feel what did you see what did you taste how was it for you you know that kind of conversation or chatting in itself is a source of learning <clears throat> and so i think the reason why i say celebrate you it's because we first have to recognize ourselves as the primary source of learning you know so do not belittle yourself you know always put yourself in high regard that i have something to learn and from what i have learned i have something to say i have something to talk about i have something to share you know you know a stem graduate should be talkative you know should talk a stem graduate doesn't give it to himself or herself you have to constantly hey you know what i was walking by you know by the seashore over the weekend with my parents and this is what i saw this is how i felt about it you have to talk about everyday experiences because stem is all about everyday experiences you know sometimes i think i kind of uh, wonder you know whether uh, we're teaching the kids the right way because certainly when i was growing up the way you are being taught is not the way we were taught you know we were taught how to memorize we were taught how to just learn from the books we were taught what we what our teachers thought you know they were teaching but we were never taught to learn things by ourselves so uh, i think you are in a very bright uh, position because your teachers and the stem school the newfield stem school is basically asking you to keep on exploring touch everything listen to things when i say listen of course i'm not just saying tiktok listening you know that's you know it's it's okay you know but it's more than that it's actually also listening let's say to your parents listening to your brothers and your sisters listening to your classmates and also thinking about what they said that is listening and that doesn't necessarily have to be by cell phone or by any gadget person to person listening is great um and so i i know that we are kind of challenged still by not being able to see our classmates but chatting on the phone for as long as it's good chat i think it's great also listening is always listening by the heart you know because sometimes you don't know whether your classmate is actually lonely so you also have to cultivate that other sense and that other sense is a deeper sense it's the sense of the heart when you listen same thing when you see sometimes we just don't have to see the face you also have to see the 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 contours of the face oh she's happy oh she's sad oh she's lonely sometimes it's also it's also feeling the touch sometimes there are touches that are happy there are touches that are lonely so all of these things you know stem is really about your everyday experience am i making sense boys and girls yeah so those those are those are that's the reason why we say you celebrate you the stem week is all about uh opening all of the senses to every day you know when your mom bakes a cake or a puto or anything you have to tell her mom this tastes good you know because i think that's part of what you have to say or so you can also say mom maybe this will be a lot better with a little sugar you know that's also good that's all still stem you know because you say that stem is about the things that we uh, taste so it's salty it's uh, sugary it's uh, vinegary all of those things so it's not just about the the science that we learn from from the books or from youtube or from all the other materials it's also about everything that you experience every day okay so um what about you what let me ask you um you know we have uh, we have a speaker and we're still waiting for her to come on board 
but because she's from America and we have uh, a different time zone, so maybe we're having these challenges. So I ask you, what is that experience every day that you'd like to talk about? You know, you can you can tell your your mom about it. You can tell your sister or brothers about it. So those things, um, yeah. So uh, again, in 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 this week, you will be exposed to a lot of things. I think you will be seeing movies, and uh, uh, your your teachers will be sharing with you several lessons. Those things are very important because, in a sense, you know, they have been kind of put together for you. But uh, you too can put together your own. And that's the reason why we say celebrate STEM and celebrate you. You know, so next time you kind of, even after this talk, <clears throat> try to feel things around you. When you go see a barber, try to be observant. When you see, uh, when you go, uh, when, when, when things become normal and you go to the market, Try to be, uh, try to open your eyes, you know, calculate why the vendor is selling this cabbage for this much, you know, and then try to think, why is the cabbage being sold, let's say, for uh, 20, pe 20 pesos a kilo? Is there a reason why it's 20 pesos a kilo? Or maybe because she has to pay for this, pay for that, you know, and therefore, you know, 20 pesos is just the right amount. So, uh, you, 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 we, we try to make our understanding deeper as to why things work that way. You know, so next time, just don't complain about, oh, ang mahal, ang mahal ng banana. You know, maybe it is mahal, but also because uh, there are reasons behind it. And uh, part of a good STEM student's work is to really find out why it is so. Um, I'm going to end my little talk there, but it's uh, good to say that it's great to see you guys. I can see all of you and really appreciate seeing your faces. Um, and I, I hope that I was able to give you a little bit of an insight on how things work. You know what? Um, for the big guys and big girls that I see in my screen, I saw you first when you were babies, you know, <laughs> about six years ago. So I'm so happy to see you that you're now all like really growing up. And so uh, looking forward to the time when I can see you again when things get normal and that I hope this whole experience of STEM will really be uh, good for, for your growing up. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for an interesting and inspirational message, Dr. Nap. Now, if anyone has any questions, yeah, I'd well. like that. Yes. If you have any questions, ask me. So, Chris and Alexia will help me uh, get questions. I can see here Kalila, Aiden, um, Taylor is here, Yuan Lee is here, Anika. James, Reagan James, Lanaya, Shandy, Cyril, Lamson, Kajin, Cole, Sabrina, Zon, Maisha, Maisha, did I say it right? And Denise, Yosef, Joel, Annika, Carl Alexis, Angela, Georgina, Keisha, Ethan, Drawn, Joaquin, Miley. Oh, lots of you. All 163 of you, but I've mentioned some. So yeah, Alexia, uh, help me out with the questions. Don't be shy. So you all may ask our beloved guest speaker here. You can... If you want to say something, please do raise your hands or message us in the chat box so we can allow you to talk freely and please wait for us to call your name before you unmute yourself, okay? Oh, I like it here. I have a question from Princess 
Holly Berry, uh, what is your biggest fear? My biggest fear is when I, I think, stop wondering. My biggest fear is when I stop getting interested. My biggest fear is when I stop questioning. You know, if I don't get to question anymore, if I don't get to wonder anymore, then it's almost like, you know, you're not alive. Because if you keep on questioning, you keep on discovering, you keep on wondering why this is so, then you feel like you're alive. Travis, you have a question? Oh, there is uh, Nicole. What is my biggest inspiration in life? I think my biggest inspiration in life is my mom, you know, uh, because uh, just like most moms, like your moms, and I'm pretty sure also your dads, um, uh, my mom, because uh, she always asked me to read. When I was little, she would always uh, give me a, a challenge. And that is, okay, there's this book, try to read it. But I just don't read the book, you know. I try to ask questions why this is so. So my biggest inspiration is my mom because, uh, because she was also a librarian in a school. And so I was always in the library and she was always giving me books to read. And, um, and so I, because of the things that I read, I became very curious, I became very interested. I have another question from Amek. You know, what is your most favorite field in science? I think there are many fields in science. For me, I want to be a virologist. Great ambition, uh, Amek, because virologies, you know, there's COVID-19 and also there will be other viruses in the future. So, um, so my most my my most favorite field in science, I think, is biology because it's the science of life, and uh, get, gets me really interested in the life cycles and, of course, how best to how best uh, a species survives. You know the challenges. So I, I I like I like doing those observations. You know uh, whether these are plants or animals. What is the, oh, lots of questions. Um, what is, let me see. Um, what is the life without learning from my life? I like this question. This is very difficult to answer. Um, yeah, I think uh, life without learning from your life, well, this is from James Matthew. Um, Matthew uh, James Matthew, I must say that uh, you, you can't really say without learning from your life. You really have to start with what you have. And so, um, so do, do it that way. Um, what is your hard subject? Okay, uh, for me, mathematics is my hard subject. Maybe not for you but uh, it's always a challenging subject. Um, what is the greatest thing that happened in my life? And this is from Lanaya. The greatest thing that happened in my life, I think is uh, my love for study. Uh, so I think I, I like that. And what is the impact of STEM in mankind? You know what guys? We, the, we just sent a robot to Mars, right? You probably know that. Uh, I think tomorrow you have an astronaut talking to you, but we just sent a robot to Mars. And that robot, the name is Perseverance Rover, is giving us pictures of Earth. And you can just see how small the Earth is, you know, from Mars. Um... Okay, uh, what is the subject I like? 
the subject I liked when I was uh, growing up was uh, literature and English because our teachers would ask us to read a lot of stories and I like stories. Um, what would I love to say to students to keep going or to inspire them? This is from Chris. I think as I've said, you know, start with yourself, um, start being curious, always try to discover things, always try to question things, um, and, 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 and never, never try to just accept things as they are, you know? How would I describe the students here? And this is from Roslyn. I think you guys are great. I like uh, your, I like the way that your energies, I can feel it. And so thank you. What motivates me to work hard? What motivates me to work hard is because just like you, when I was little, I have always been uh, very interested in so many things. And so even if I'm now 60 years old, I have never stopped working. I have never stopped really discovering things for myself and finding out what would make things better. And so how to make things better is what motivates me in my life. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, okay. Who has supported me when I was growing up? Well, a lot of people have uh, supported me, my mom, my dad, my aunts, um, even my brothers and my sister, because I think it's, it's really the family that has supported me when I was growing up. Is it difficult to be a founder of a STEM school? It is both difficult and easy. It's difficult because, uh, you know, we have challenges from some of our teachers, of course, they probably are going to be leaving us because of many uh, other opportunities that they may have. But I think what is easy is because um, it's talking to students like you are always curious about so many things. Okay. Wow. There are, is there any gadget? I want to make that can really help us. It's almost impossible. Uh, uh, no, uh, there is no gadget I want to make. I think that's. I, I think the challenge is for you. You are gonna be the future makers of those gadgets. Uh, okay, so I think I've taken. Um, uh, a lot of your questions. What about you? What if I ask you a question and uh, somebody answers me? Let me ask you a question. What is your most favorite part of being in new fields? What's your most favorite part of being in new fields? Can somebody answer me? Maybe unmute their microphone and let me know. Doing challenge. Doing challenge. Oh, oh, why? Hi, Joaquin. That's great. Why are you challenged, Joaquin? Because the challenge makes me enjoy. Okay. What else? What, um, uh, apart from challenge? The activities and the stories, too. The activities and the stories. Oh, great. Yeah. What are, are do they listen to your stories, Lawrence? Do the teachers? Oh, what about you, James Matthew? Do they listen to your stories? Maybe because I maybe tell some stories. Okay. I'm usually a story maker here. Who else? Who else wants to share? What's your yes, Mariah? Solving word problems. Okay, you, you work on problems. But do you like problems? Do you like working on problems? Mariah? Yes. Perfect. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Yes. Oh, great. great. Who, 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 hel who helps you? I, I see you have a baby. Is that a baby brother or a baby, baby sister? Mariah. Oh, okay. Mariah has left. 
Do you have a baby sister or a baby brother? A baby brother. Ah, very good. Yeah. So, remember what I told you? Try to observe your baby brother. She, he's almost like a STEM student, right? <laughs> okay, Misha, how are you? Uh, good. And, no, and there's also, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead, Misha, and then Yusuf. What's your question, Misha? It is just an answer to your question, but... Yeah, yeah, the answer to my question. What is it that you like most about doing STEM? It helps me learn, and that learning helps me solve my hard problems in time. Okay, but you know what? Solving problems, there are many, many problems that you can see around you. You know, it can be, when I say problem, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, problem, problem. I'm talking about things that you can easily solve, uh, things that you can think about, you know. Like, for instance, you can think about, oh, when I grow up, I want to have this uh, gadget because it will help me uh, identify this particular uh, plant. You know, although, of course, we already have that kind of gadget, but that's the kind of that's the kind of solution we want for some problems, you know, or I want to be able to come up with a tool that can make me break this knot, you know, th those types of things. Yeah. Thank you, Misha. Yes, Yusif, you were raising your hand earlier. Anything else? Okay. Um, oh. Yes, Yusif. Oh, yeah, ask question. Um, this is my uh, answer for the... Uh the answer to your question um uh, there is a competitive atmosphere a competitive. friendly there is a friendly competitive atmosphere in in your school right yeah you know what Com competition is always healthy uh uh, for as long as it stay it stays like that it's not to compare you uh, with the other but it's just really to kind of uh, give you the energy to always go beyond what you can do so let's say you can do four and your classmate says oh i can do five then it also gives you that uh, energy and inspiration i can do five too you know, but that's healthy. So it's almost like you keep on pushing yourself to do better. Because uh, any, anybody can always do better. Okay, so competition is good. Thank you. Okay, Anything? thank you, Dr. Matt. Okay, thank you. All our questions. Yeah, thank you, Again, Alexia. Thank you for sharing your precious time with us, Dr. Napoleon K. Honilio Jr. Um, we are very honored to have you as our guest speaker today. I hope you also enjoyed chatting with us. Yes, I did. I did. very Indeed, I did. Thank you very much for inviting me. And to all our fellow New Fielders this morning, I'm hoping that we have gained as much input as possible and have been inspired by our guest speaker.